Eight frogs are sitting at the corners of a cube. A jump consists of any frog reflecting its position over any other frog. Can you make a sequence of jumps that results in the frogs forming a larger cube? Throughout this video, we'll uncover the solution step by step, and along the way learn some general problem-solving techniques that can be applied to all areas of math. If you're ready, let's jump in. The first thing we'll do is abstract the frogs into spheres, since mathematicians are lazy. And as always, when a problem is stated in three dimensions, it's a good idea to consider the two-dimensional version. Here, that means four frogs in a square, and we'd like to make a larger square. A good starting point is just to experiment. Let's make some moves and see if we notice anything. A natural question you might ask is whether there is some restriction on where the frogs can end up. We'll keep track of previous frog positions and make some jumps. It looks like the frogs are confined to points of the grid formed by duplicating the original square. Now we can form a hypothesis. Frogs will always land on grid points. We want to prove this hypothesis, but right now a jump is defined sort of abstractly, just as a reflection over another frog. So we first need to get more specific about what a jump means mathematically. We'll denote the position of a frog as an ordered pair, with an x component and a y component. This way we can treat them as vectors. For now, let's focus on just two frogs. Let's observe the jump. We can break this down into components. Frog A moves right and up to meet frog B, and then repeats the same movements. This x distance is B's x minus A's x, and this one is the same. We can combine these, and do the same for the y distances. After some rearranging, we'll be left with a formula that takes two frog vectors as inputs and outputs the destination vector of the jumping frog. Let's verify our formula with an example. We plug in vectors a and b, and we find that we expect frog a to land in this green circle. And when we perform the jump, that's exactly what we see. The important thing to notice is that we're doing multiplication and subtraction on whole numbers, so the output coordinates will also be whole numbers. And this verifies our hypothesis that the frogs will always be on grid points. But the original problem was about frogs in a cube. Does this same concept apply in three dimensions? In fact, it does. We can break down the jump into an x component, a y component, and now a z component. And again, the frogs are confined to whole number coordinates. Now we've shown that frogs will always be confined to points of a grid formed by duplicating the square they start in. This is one of two important observations that will lead us to the solution. The other observation is that any jump is reversible. Now we're about to get to the solution, so I encourage you to pause the video here and try to use these two facts to work out an argument for why it is or is not possible to make a larger square. Let's suppose for a moment that it is possible, that some sequence of moves results in a larger square. In this example, the new square is 9 times the size of the original, but this argument works for any larger square. Since every jump is reversible, it must be possible to get back to the smaller square by reversing the jumps. But here's the problem. The larger square creates a larger grid. The frogs are now confined to these grid points, and getting back to the smaller square would require going in between grid points. So it's not possible. Since it wouldn't be possible to get to a smaller square, it must not have been possible to get to a larger square. So we've proven by contradiction that it is not possible to make a larger square. And this argument works exactly the same with the original cube. A larger cube would mean the frogs being restricted to the blue intersections. So it wouldn't be possible to get back to the smaller cube in between intersections. I hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to leave any questions in the comment section. Until next time.